What's up, world? I'm the determined black man, John Jay, and as usual, I'm determined to reach at least one somebody out there listen to the sounds of my voice, if not each and every one of you all. So, I'm going to make it real short and sweet for you all, YouTube, because I notice when I look into the YouTube analytics, after about two and a half minutes, your retention is gone. So the retention really explains to me your attention span. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that my, um, uh, maybe because of the quality of my videos, which I haven't got to the point yet where I can actually afford to give you quality videos per se, as far as what you see. But if you close your eyes and envision everything that I'm saying, I promise you it's high quality. It's the highest of quality because what I am trying to convey is a message not only to, to us as black people, but especially to our young adults. The ones that have a chance to make a difference. See, the ones in my generation, only thing we can really do now is talk about it. You know what I'm saying? We just had our opportunities to make action. You know what I'm saying? But now all we can do is plan and talk. You feel me? The action got to come from the fiery, the young, the, the ones that are still passionate and, and jumping and got plenty of energy. You know what I mean? And I ain't saying for them to go out here and do nothing destructive. I'm just putting things in perspective. So, if you will, hit the like button, please, because I'm trying to grow the channel. So, I need you all support. I don't have high quality cameras. I don't have high quality speakers. I would love to get to that point eventually, but my whole point and my whole purpose is to share a message. I shouldn't have to have all of these bells and whistles in order to convey this message over to you before I can get your attention. I try to use thumbnails that are still related to the topic, but are very, you know, attractive to the young and the old. Because this message needs to reach each of you all. The old man needs to be able to Gather his thoughts so that he can dream the dreams that he needs to dream to be able to, 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 to preach and to teach the youth so that they can have the visions to be able to put those dreams into fruition so that they can manifest those dreams. They can manifest those visions. See, the old man dreams dreams and the young man has visions. And the only difference between the dream and the vision is the vision is more putting the ball on the court. And so it's action rather than just going by the ball. You know what I'm saying? Or having thoughts about buying the ball. You feel me? That's the dream. Like, oh, I ought to play ball tomorrow. I just had an epiphany. You know what I'm saying? Basically dreaming, daydreaming. So anyway, I want y'all to check this out. For those of you all that haven't seen Dave Chappelle's monologue on Saturday Night Live, if it haven't been removed, because you know it's a lot of controversy surrounding it, I actually uploaded majority of it, spliced and diced and everything, and they still chose to take it down or to, or, or to interrupt. So I had, what I had to do was I had to chop it on down, but I didn't want to lose the views. So for any of you all that's mad at me for keeping up the video, that's really not giving you a full depiction of what Dave Chappelle did and said on Saturday Night Live, then just go check out the uh, the full version of it on Saturday Night Live. I'll leave, um, I'll leave the URL in the description. You can go check it out there. But, uh... <laughs> and I'm watching the news now. They're declaring the end of the Trump era. Now, okay, I can see how in New York you might believe this is the end of his era. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I live in Ohio amongst... The poor whites. <laughs> a lot of you don't understand why Trump was so popular, but I, I get it, because I hear it every day. He's very loved. And the reason he's loved is because people in Ohio have never seen somebody like him. He's what I call an honest liar. Well, I'm not joking right now. He's an honest liar. That first debate, that first debate, I'd never seen anything like it. I've never seen a white male billionaire screaming at the top of his lungs. This whole system is rigged, he said. <laughs> and across the stage was a white woman, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, sitting over there looking at him like, no, it's not. I said, now, wait a minute, bro. <laughs> it's what he said. And the moderator said, well, Mr. Trump, if in fact the system is rigged, as you suggest, what would be your evidence? You remember what he said, bro? 
He said, I know the system is rigged because I use it. I said, God damn. <laughs> and then he pulled out an Illuminati membership card and chopped a line of cocaine up and did it right into the podium. No one had ever heard someone say something that true. And then Hillary Clinton tried to punch him in the taxes. She said, this man doesn't pay his taxes. He shot right back. That makes me smart. <laughs> and then he said, if you want me to pay my taxes, then change the tax code. But I know you won't, because your friends and your donors enjoy the same tax breaks that I do. And with that, my friends, a star was born. <laughs> no one had ever seen anything like that. No one had ever seen somebody come from inside of that house, outside, and tell all the commoners, we are doing everything that you think we are doing <laughs> inside of that house. They just went right back in the house and started playing the game again. <laughs> okay. So, for those of you all that understand the current quote, in America, we all know that Trump wants to be president again, right? And a lot of you all don't even understand how Trump became president to begin with. Well, though Dave Chappelle just made a joke about it, and, and this whole monologue was, you know, a joke. But let's be honest, to those of you all that have a higher sense, you know, an acute sense or ability to, 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 to retain and, and, and to articulate you will understand the message that's being said without being said. Because Dave Chappelle is a very articulate person, not just a comedian, not just a shoebox comedian. He's uh, very careful about the words that he says and his displacement and even his body language, everything. He's very careful, very humble, you know, but at the same time, very stern where he stands, you know, because I appreciate him for saying this. And the NBA told me he should apologize, and he was slow to apologize. And then the list of demands to get back in their good graces got longer and longer, and this, this is where, you know, I draw the line. I know the Jewish people have been through terrible things all over the world, but, 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 but you can't blame that on black Americans. You just, you just can't. You know what I mean? Thanks for the one person that said me. You see what I'm saying? Not very many celebrities of his status, especially after all of the, the different turmoil that he has been through. You know, he has had his infractions with uh, the powers that be, I'll say. You know what I'm saying? And he has, you know, he has gone into exile and had to abandon the United States and all type of stuff just to get away from all this the mockery and the, the fakery. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate him. I appreciate him actually on the stage that he was standing I mean, and I already knew he was going to keep it authentic. He was going to keep it real. If you listen to the music, the, the intro when he comes out, it's Otis Red. You know, go listen to it. I'm not going to put it on here, but go listen to it. His, when he comes out, he listen to Otis Red. So he keeping it real. He keeping it solid. He keeping it soulful. You feel me? And he keeping it honest. He keeping the buck. He keeping it 1,000. So that's why I appreciate it. Now I want y'all to check this out and you will understand more of why a lot of this stuff that's going on is going on. Because as he just alluded to, Donald J. Trump don't hold nothing back. He's an honest liar. Yeah, he may manipulate things to help benefit himself, but one thing about it, he's going to put everything out on the shelf. He's going to let you see it for yourself. Somebody someday is going to explain that one to me. It actually makes you rage with anger when you hear that. They wanted 750 so badly, and now they're getting $4 billion. We will wage war upon the cartels and stop the fentanyl and deadly drugs from killing 200,000 Americans per year. And I will ask Congress for legislation ensuring that drug dealers and human traffickers, these are terrible, terrible, horrible people who are responsible for death, carnage, and crime all over our country. Every drug dealer, during his or her life on average, will kill 500 people with the drugs they sell, not to mention the destruction of families. But we're going to be asking everyone who sells drugs, gets caught selling drugs, to receive the death penalty for their heinous acts. Because 
It's the only way. We don't need any more blue ribbon committees. We don't need, I don't like to say this, and I don't even know if the American public is ready for it. And a lot of my people say, please don't say that, sir. That's not nice. They kill 500 people each on average. And if you don't do this, in China, when I was with President Xi, I said, President, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we don't. He looked at me like I didn't know what I was doing. He said, uh, no, we don't have a drug. How come you don't have a drug problem? He said, quick trial. What is a quick trial? Quick, I sort of knew. What is a quick trial? That's where, if you get caught dealing drugs, you have an immediate and quick trial, and by the end of the day, you're executed. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. But they have no drug problem. The only drug problem they have is they make the fentanyl that comes into our country, and I had him stopping it. And then, when I was gone, nobody ever mentioned it to him again. We were stopping it. That was way down, that number. But they send it in. But they don't have a drug problem. Uh, other countries, like Singapore, has no drug problem. No drug. You ask them, they don't even know what you're talking about when they say drug problem. They don't even know what you're talking about. They have no drug problem. Now, why should they sell there and risk their lives every time they sell when they can come to the United States and nobody even cares? They can do whatever they want to do and become rich. It's a disgrace. So if you want to get rid of that and also bring down your level of crime, probably 75 or 80 percent, that's the only answer. No more blue ribbon. I refuse to create them anymore. It was just a joke. It was New York people wanting to be on a committee for publicity reasons. No. No more blue ribbon committees. That's the only way you're going to solve the problem. And I hope politicians are listening because they should do it quickly. Joe Biden has also proven that he is committed to indoctrinating our children, even using the Department of Justice against parents who object. It's a terrible thing. It's, it's so sad what's happening. When I'm in the White House, our schools will cease pushing critical race theory as they were. Radical civics and gender insanity. Or if they do that, they will lose all federal funding, but we'll get them to stop. And I will be the president who finally fixes education in America. We were doing great. We were doing, we were starting to really get it right. We will not let men, as an example, participate in women's sports. Is that okay? No, we, no men. No men. <laughs> My people tell me, sir, that's politically incorrect to say. I said, that's okay, I'll say it anyway, if you don't mind. <laughs> we've, had, we've had tremendous, tremendous problems. And, and you know, it's very unfair to women, just very, very unfair. We will defend the rights of parents and we will defend the family as the center of American life. But who would think, standing up here 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that a politician, and I don't like to think of myself as a politician, but I guess that's what I am. I hate that thought. But that a politician would be up saying, we will defend parental rights. Of course you're going to defend it. Who would think that we even have to mention this? Who would think it even should be a subject to be talked about? We have to defend parental rights. Can you believe this? As Commander-in-Chief, I will get Biden's radical left ideology out of our military, and I did. I did. And in the first day, they put it back. They signed an executive order, and they put it back. It was gone. We will abolish every Biden COVID mandate and rehire every patriot who was fired from our military with an apology and full back pay. One thing about it, you're gonna put everything out on the shelf. He's gonna let you Thank see you. it for yourself. And that's, as Dave just alluded to, you Northerners, or you you you, you coastliners, you ones that's far out and uh, beyond. The, the the move and the uh the, the the scope of Donald Trump, you know, and how far and deep and long and wide the love for him goes, especially in the South. Man, all you gotta do is come down here, open your eyes. Stickers everywhere, flags flying everywhere. Yeah. 
And, you know, I'm not mad at him because that's the energy that we need. We need to get behind people that we know are going to help push things for our community just as well like him. You know, and not afraid, unapologetic. Say what you say, what you feel, say what you want, say what you will, as long as it's stand up for our community and take the flag behind it. Be ready, be ready to sacrifice whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's why I also am able to say I appreciate Kyrie, even though he wasn't intended for this, all this stuff to blow up in his face. He, he had to know that it was a possibility. You know, just even associating yourself with, you know, especially what you've seen just happen to, to Kanye. You know, based off of a comment he made on Drink Champs. So we know that the world is listening. We know that the world is watching. And as Chappelle just did, you have to be careful. You know, he even came out and, and, and gave a disclaimer. To begin his set, he gave a disclaimer to the Jewish community. And I got much love for every community, as I said before. But we got to respect black. We got to respect people of color. You know, people of color in their minds as well. See, nobody has this type of energy towards us and all of our disparities and unfortunate things that's going on with us in the hood because they all want to try to make us believe that it's just us, that the reason why we are the way that we are. But scientists have proved it. Um, psychologists, um, different types of professionals have proven that the things that a lot of us can't even figure out our own why it's going on, why we feel the way we feel, is psychological and it's genetic. It has been passed down through the through the traits and genes from years and hundreds of years. That anger, that madness, that 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 need to know, you know what I'm saying? Trying to figure and seek, as Kyrie is obviously doing. Though he's being criticized, ostracized, um, politicized, I don't know what else to call it. For sharing a tweet, giving some information. To the public, his followers, people that's already following him, they already know what plight he's on. So why is it such a big deal? Because these are the things that they don't want you to know. And they'll try to attach these big words and names to stuff so that you can be afraid of it. Anti-Semitic trope. You know what I'm saying? Come on. You know, and I and I, and I see people on this Farrakhan uh, video that I share comments going crazy. You got a lot of hate speech, hate mail, hate comments. I'm leaving it all up. Because I want the world to see that we are not the only ones trying to expose the hate in this world. But as quick as we do, the quicker they try to take and do the reverse psychology thing on us. You know, and that's been going on for hundreds of years. So I don't expect it to stop no time soon. But what I do expect is for us to start realizing and recognizing and stop catering to them. Stop giving them all our money and going out here shopping, buying stuff that's unnecessary. Yeah, we fall into the holiday season that everybody says is the reason. You know, to go out here and spend all your money and then fight all next year to get back to the same point again. Why? Who are you trying to please? The children only feel the way they feel because we have encouraged them that this is the way it's supposed to be. Rather than teaching them morals and giving them things that's going to help them, giving them the tangible things that's going to help them to advance in life, a life that they already fight behind an eight ball. They already got so many, so many stripes against them when they, they ain't did nothing. Just woke up, was born, and you already behind the A-ball. You already got an uphill battle to fight. So why are we encouraging it more and more through our actions? Grown black people, those of you all that have your own minds and, and way of understanding, we got to do better, man. We got to do better. I want to be the one to encourage you to. I love my people. And that's why, as this channel, I, I want to use it as a platform to reach and teach and help gravitate my people back to where we need to be. We first of all got to get back closer to the man on high and, and allow him to supply us with what we need and stop trying to lean onto our own understanding. That has caused us nothing but setbacks. Nothing but setbacks. Trying to figure it all out on our own. No, let's consult the man on high and let's come together. They say, well, more than two are gathered. See, I don't care if it's for the bad. When you start bringing numbers together, then you start making things happen. Believe that. So if you will, if y'all please hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button. I promise you will not be disappointed. If this is the mission that you are on, if this is the journey that you are on, if this is what you want to accomplish, you want to see your sons and your daughters able to be 
in their rightful positions, as I've said on, on previous videos, sitting in there on those thrones as kings and queens and treated with respect and looked up to, you know, and if they own a business, you want them to be able to go, grow their business and, and, and be afforded and allotted the same opportunities as a Walmart, as a Kroger's, as a, you know, uh, Brookshire's, all these major food chains, Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's that have not one. Well, I know Wendy's does have um, one investor that's major. That's a black. Well, actually, he was a basketball player. I think he played for the Sixers. I can't call his name. Y'all can go look him up. He's actually a millionaire. Um, I know he's worth probably about three or four hundred million or better. But uh, he took his money, invested wisely. Wasn't even a big name in the NBA. But I think he, he, he was uh, drafted in the 70s or something like that. Maybe played through the early 80s. He didn't even play that long. But he took his money, invested it wisely, and now he made multiple. He's multiplied his uh, investment multiples. You know, he's done multiples. And that's great. You know what I'm saying? That's encouraging. And that's what we need. See, it don't take all these billions of dollars. If you just take your million, you get and you take it and you invest it wisely and you work it and it got a good cause behind it, it's going to flip. See, I guarantee you this man's God fearing. I guarantee you this man is a family oriented person. Just like you just heard Trump say he's been trying, he's trying to get America back to the family setting. He want America back on a family setting. And I'm not agreeing with everything. Trump, you know what I'm saying? Not at all. But as Dave Chappelle said, this is why America loves him. Because he puts things into reality, he puts things into perspective. Though he may be bullcrapping, he still the ideas that he raised. And some of this stuff he is really pushing. You know what I'm saying? So it's respectable. It's, it's, it's not just commendable, but it's respectable. It may not even be commendable, some of the stuff that he spews from his mouth. It's rhetoric. But as Chappelle said, he is an honest liar. And, and, and most politicians are just liars. So some of us can appreciate the honesty, though we know it's going to be some bullshit in the end. But we appreciate the honesty because it actually gives us a leg up. So now we got a decision to make on our own. Whereas being blinded and just va vaguely and blatantly lied to, you kind of get caught up in the middle. And so most of us end up getting, you know, ran smooth over with the bullshit political tropes. <laughs> anyway, I love y'all. I wish... Each and every one of you are the best. I only do this for us, y'all. I do this for us. I really haven't made a dime off of YouTube videos. I just got monetized and I'm still not seeing no revenue. So all I do is I ask that you all hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, set your notifications so that you can get notified each and every time that I drop videos. I'm going to be dropping 15, 20 videos a month, y'all. So that's almost a video every other day. And I promise you, I will not fail you on the information. Information is powerful. And that's why I am all about spreading and teaching my people so that we can learn to respect the power of information. Yeah. Just like the rest of you guys, Kanye and all of them put pointing out. Are they taking these people to trial? Are they taking their money back? The one, the other ones that have profited the majority of the money is off of these songs that these guys are getting uh, incriminated off of. You know what I'm saying? The songs that they're using to incriminate these guys. That they catching a lot of these guys up in Rico X and all that. And, um, and let's just say people like Kanye losing deals and stuff left and right from what he said. Are any of them losing any deals, any money, any sleep, anything? No. They're benefiting, they're profiting, and they're exciting because they're doing what? Continuing to feed it. Continuing to endorse it. Continuing to, continuing to put monies into the hands and pockets of these young men that don't even know the true value of life other than what they done heard and seen coming up. And majority of us then taught them that it's nothing but about the bucks. It's about nothing else other than the money. So now, life don't matter to them. You know, education don't matter to them. Uh, family don't matter to them. Loyalty don't matter to them. Just caring don't matter to them. We don't give a fuck. That's the attitude that has been adopted by this generation and is mostly due to generation what X, that's what I consider X. So generation Z is on that kind of like defense. I don't give a fuck. Just wait and watch what happened to the next generation. If we don't gain hold to them right now, that's my fear. I got young kids. I don't want to see my kids or none of your kids out here, 9, 10, slinging iron. 11, 12, head to prison. 13, 14, uh, boys looking like little girls, girls looking like little boys. 
You heard what he said? Trump just told you. He will not allow men to play in the WNBA. Because that's the current plight of things. That's the current ploy. They're trying to encourage us that it's okay just to be who you want to be. And then you're going to allow this grown man just because he want to identify as a woman. Y'all even contemplating allowing them to get in on the court with my, my daughter and compete with my daughter? Get the hell out of here. Go in the bathroom with my daughter? Nah. Come on, let's be real. So anyway, I'm going to love y'all. I'm going to leave y'all. hope that y'all stay up, stay humble, good people. I'm going to turn my black man, John Jay, and I'm out.